outdoor test with the Xperia 1 Mark V to just see if the Android 14 upgrade really improved the camera experience and this test here because it's outdoors now right now and it's sunny and we have 11 degrees outside again uh, is I think the perfect kind of test uh, for the ranking of the Xperia 1 Mark V especially when it comes to the telezoom for portraits but also for close-up shots so can we zoom in with this one pretty far and good. How's the quality? How are the improvements? Let's check it out. So let's check the photos with the tele zoom lens of the Xperia 1 Mark V. This is the three and a half times zoom and as you can see here yeah, let's take a look at the 100% view. Can we see everything? I think we can. Also it's quite detailed as well we can see all the little numbers here even this little number plate we can read without any issues and all the little details are visible even if we zoom in to 5.2 times you can see yeah there's a slight difference in terms of colors so it's a bit darker there more contrasty look here it's a bit brighter kind of a look uh, but the detail level is there still yes maybe it starts a little bit of graininess there but I think the detail level is quite good there without any issues with the 5.2 times zoom. Keep in mind this is a pretty close-up shot so this pretty close-up shot is working quite nice with this zoom and I think this is something that I did not take into account on the first time I was testing out the Xperia 1 Mark V that the tele zoom lens that we have here works better for closer up uh, closer subjects or objects that are a bit closer there and you zoom in not too close because the minimum focus distance is not there but a little bit closer range not so far off in range so this is something that for example the Xiaomi 14 Pro and 14 also has three and a half times zoom again this time quite detailed still also towards the edges nice and sharp no issues there at all um, quite contrasty kind of look I like this this is why I was shooting against the sun as you can see here also I think the HDR is working fine there's a slight smudge there that uh, comes from like the um, lens flare effect that you have even though we have Zeiss T-star coating we still have this here and uh, this here just to photograph to see how good the sharpness is and I think it is not over sharpening which is quite nice but it's also not too soft so again this is like a test to see closer up subjects is working quite nicely this is a bit further away already and this is at 5.2 times and I think it's doing a quite good of a job at 5.2 times as you can see here the detail level is there you can see everything yeah, this was like for Christmas already. Yeah, this is a bit further away as well. This is, as you can see here, there you can see a little bit of like chromatic aberrations uh, going on there. This is already, I think, um, a stretch there with 5.2 times as well. And then we come to the ultra zoom levels. And this is where I think it falls apart a little bit. This is three and a half times zoom. I think this is still looking okay. No issues there at all. It's a bit contrasty looking. 5.2 times zoom. It's a tiny bit softer, but it's also still looking good. And then we come to 10 times, and I think here it is falling apart a little bit already with this far away zoom. So here I see others definitely being better, but it's not as bad as it was before. So you can see still some details here on this little church, for example, and uh, yeah, the little houses there. It's a bit of noisy for sure. Then when you zoom in even further, I think this is, yes, this is the maximum zoom that you can get. You can see, yeah, it is not pretty. It's not pretty at all, but um, for what it is, I think it is okay-ish, kind of. But for further away subjects, I think this is like objects, this is like an issue. If you are taking portraits, however, I found the three and a half and 5.2 times zoom is working quite nice. This is now a portrait of my dog Timmy, as you can see here. Quite nice of a detail at 100% view. Uh, yes, if I zoom in further, probably I see some noise and so on. But also I think the bokeh with the new Android 14 update is working fine, even for dogs. Another shot of him, and this time I got his nose sharp. And another shot now with 5.2 times zoom. And you can see the detail level quite nice here 
I think it's doing a splendid job for, for those kinds of portraits here. Also 5.2 times zoom, you can see very, very nice. Three and a half times zoom, nice readable there, as you can see. And uh, when I go to the 5.2 times zoom, it's getting a bit softer for sure, but it's not too bad. The same goes for here. As you can see three and a half times zoom, everything nice and readable. Maybe down below here, a little bit soft. Uh, we see already the individual LEDs that we usually don't see with smartphones. They're just smudging them together somehow. Here it is visible. And uh, yeah, here Star Wars in concert, A New Hope. Um, film is playing in the background, the movie is playing in the background and an orchestra is playing in the foreground. Very interesting idea, concert idea. As you can see it's Saturday on uh, the 20th of April 2024. It's uh, possible to take a look at this. Uh, anyway, <coughs> this is three and a half times zoom. I think it looks good. Like text, nice sharp, no issues at all. QR code, readable, no issues at all. Uh, 5.2 times zoom, you can see it's getting a little bri uh, brighter again, so not so contrasty looking, but also text, yeah, okay, it's big text, but even the smaller text, nice and sharp, everything readable, even the QR code without any issues. And then 10 times zoom, getting a bit softer there, as you can see, and a little bit of editing there as well to optimize the text a bit, um, but still also nice and readable, and you can see some chromatic aberrations going on already also on the QR code, but it's still okay, I would say. And this another shot at 5.2 times zoom. And uh, here, interesting, interestingly enough, it's like pretty sharp, so yeah. Got this going. Yeah, actually, this was three and a half times zoom, and this is 5.2 times zoom, and there it's getting a bit softer, as you can see here. So yes, 5.2 times zoom gets a bit softer for sure. And this is now 10 times zoom. And here I'm pretty blown away that it's still holding up so good. And you can read everything there. Pretty nice, have all the LEDs individually there. So yeah, this is quite good. This is also 5.2 times zoom now. Um, yeah, for Christmas something, Kaufland advertisement. And this is now the 10 times zoom where it gets a bit softer and you get chromatic aberrations. So yes, I think three and a half times and 5.2 times are quite improved, uh, well done by uh, Sony. And close focusing distance didn't change. I test this out as well. This is three and a half times zoom. And this is where I got like the idea, maybe it's better for closer up subjects, not so far subjects. You can see my Mate X3 and a little bit of dust that I didn't see. Uh, but interesting details that you can see like this here, there's I think some, some kind of sensor and it has like a hole down below. Here's the microphone, it's probably laser focus or something like this. And it's not completely round. There you can see the prism for the five times zoom. Quite interesting and uh, quite detailed. And this is 5.2 times zoom. I have to go a little bit further away, however, with, the, with this one. And I think it doesn't have so much details as the 3.5 times zoom. So yes, 3.5 times zoom is still better than 5.2 times zoom on the Xperia 1 Mark 5, but it improved a lot tremendously, I would even say, in comparison to what we had before. What do you think? Write it down in the comments. And now what we want to do is a little comparison with the closest in terms of telezoom lenses or tele, tele lenses that we have to the Xperia 1 Mark 5. Xperia 1 Mark 5 is on the left always and the other smartphones on the right. In this case we start with the Nubia Z50s Pro on the right. It has an 8 megapixel um, uh, sensor there and uh, we start with the native zoom so three and a half times zoom this is how it looks like in a bit of dim lit indoor situation you can see quite grainy and noisy but you can still even read the text down below there on the Nubia it gets a bit harder to read the text actually down below it doesn't have so much noise that's true it has a little bit of denoising going on but it has some issues there with the uh, text down below that hardly can read it and it's not so detailed. We have 80 millimeters here on the uh, Nubia and uh, Sony I think doesn't show the real uh, the 35 mm in equivalent uh, but it's the three and a half times zoom which is I think 75 millimeters if I'm not completely mistaken or also 85, 85 millimeters maybe. Um, let's check out the next one, which is the 170 millimeter on the Nubia. 
and the equivalent almost there is like five times zoom should be almost on the xperia the xperia 5.2 times zoom still a bit noisy still a bit grainy still readable down below and here harder to read on the nubia z50s pro even though i'm zoomed in a little bit more yeah the eight megapixels give it make it a little bit harder to read i would say also because like yeah it has some issues there but at least the big gap that we see in the rating because we have an uh, ultra, uh the zoom lens on the nubia z50s pro has a rating of four stars where i think it's three point something on the xperia it's not justified alone by this uh, i can already tell you uh, this uh, quite clearly let's go to the maximum zoom here 10 times actually i think it can zoom in even further but this is 10 times and now let's go to 10 times here now let's compare this uh, with each other and you can also see yes 10 times versus 10 times the xperia is just better than the nubia in this case in this indoor situation simply and then portraits quite oops quite interesting as well we have the most natural colors for portraits that i ever saw this is not a portrait kind of mode that i enabled for some reason the nubia when as soon as it detects the face even if i ai turned off in photo mode it's doing this portrait effect to it so just ignore this one but i was taking it normally you can see the xperia is quite good three and a half times zoom this is what what i said like why i was wrong before with close-up subjects for portraits for example the lens is quite good it's sharp it's detailed it has a bit of noise yes but it looking good the bokeh is also natural bokeh not too much bokeh there the colors are nice it's looking fine also the colors of my eyes uh, look this look at this here on the nubia yes indoors but with natural light coming in this is uh, where i take my portraits usually and yeah it is blowing the nubia away here in this case which is quite interesting and when we go further this is now the 5.2 times it's a bit of a crop that i have to do here is it's even cropped in a little bit more i think the nubia is redeeming itself a little bit there getting a bit sharper but compare this here and look at my eyes compare it with the xperia you can see how much better the xperia is so no we cannot give this zoom high high score zoom to the nubia with four uh, points there because it has a larger reach for sure and the xperia of worst kind of uh, rating for at least for portraits this is like a big difference now let's go to 10 times zoom on this subject here it's a bit closer up it's a bit brighter there on the nubia but in terms of details here 10 times you can see forget about 10 times <laughs> the nubia and the xperia yeah i would also say almost forget about it but it is clearer a little bit it is a bit softer there's a more chromatic aberrations uh it's quite vivid as well detail level almost on par it's a bit noisy there as well so yes i uh, don't do 10 times zoom this is like i think an issue also with the xperia but i think the xperia is a bit better there three and a half times zoom versus three and a half times zoom colors and rendition and so on again a little bit grainy a bit noisy on the xperia less noise more contrasty on the nubia uh, with its native uh, zoom here which is like two times because it's 35 millimeters or so 70 or 80 millimeters 80 millimeters um so it is like uh, yeah uh, but also a bit grainy there a different color uh, quite interesting because this box if you have this costs by the way very nice headphones they yeah, look very very old school but very nice uh, sound just uh, i think i have to test them this color here on the nubia is wrong it's red on the nubia but it is more pinkish uh, like the xperia is uh, capturing this color so this is like another point for the xperia and the detail level on both i think quite nice uh, indeed even though it's a bit grainy on the xperia and uh, the next one is uh, this shot here of santa and when you compare this this is um, quite an interesting idea to have like the in-between zooms because this is also one of the strengths of the zoom uh, telezoom yeah method that the xperia uses because in between like 3.5 and 5.2 so 4.4 what i'm using on the xperia right now 
it should have an advantage because it's an optical zoom and not digitally cropping in. And yes, it looks a bit different because we have a bit of a different zoom level. It's starting from 80 millimeters on the uh, Nubia. And if we zoom in a little bit there, looks a little bit different there. But still, what you can clearly see is, yes, it looks a bit artificial on the Nubia already. And the Xperia looks better again. A little bit more detailed, better colors as well. And especially the green here is looking like this. And the Nubia is making it a little bit too punchy here in this case. And not so detailed as you can see there as well. And I think this uh, this last picture of Timmy, of course. Uh, low light and close up shot 5.2 times zoom. So the maximum zoom. And uh, yeah, it's grainy here on the Xperia. And it's grainy there on the Nubia. Not grainy, it's like smudging, smudged everything out there on the Nubia. The fur color is wrong on the Nubia. It's too yellowish. It's more whitish. You can see the white background there as well. So I think the Xperia in the end is winning. And there we come to the beginning already. And uh, this is the Nubia. So we have already seen it is beating the Nubia there. So it should have higher score than Nubia. Then the next um, one, also I think with four points, is the Mate X3. So let's compare the Mate X3 <coughs> against the Xperia. And uh, there you can see 3.2 times zoom. It doesn't have an optical zoom there, so it's of course losing there at this. But at its native zoom range, which is, which is five point something, five, five point uh, five again, you can see it is a bit better than the uh, Xperia at five point two times zoom. So we have less noise. We have a warmer kind of view, which is maybe not so realistic on the Mate X3, but. Uh, nice readable and I think a bit sharper there as well so yeah at this zoom level the Mate X5 is working a bit better how about 10 times zoom it should translate also to 10 times zoom let's look at this yeah it is heavily edited and when you compare it now it's a bit grainy on the Xperia but the text looks because it's so small it looks a bit hard to read there on the Mate X3 it's readable but yeah, which one would pref would you prefer? The less edited, more optical zoom look-alike on the Xperia or the heavily edited one on the Mate X3? It would be very interesting to know which one you like better. Uh, Timmy is joining me for this little comparison. Uh, next photo, please go further. Uh, I think... We have to go back here because of the... There we go. Uh, three and a half times zoom again versus three and a half times zoom. Yeah, just like I said before, the colors are wrong. Also at five times zoom versus 5.2 times zoom. Look at this. Look at this. Yes, the Xperia is winning also against the Mate X3 with native five times zoom. The colors are wrong on the Mate X5, X3 and uh, it's also not as sharp. So let's go and check out further images like this one, for example. There we go. When we compare this here 10 times. You can see it's also quite soft. It is like... Uh, on par I would say with the Xperia so not much of a difference at 10 times zoom which is also quite interesting there and uh, let's check out this one this should be the next one as well five times versus three and a half times so the best native zooms what we can clearly see here again pinkish kind of color here dark reddish kind of color so the color is wrong yes it is uh, not so noisy, but it's also quite soft there at five times zoom on the Mate X3, where it is, even if I punch in a little bit more, like roughly to the same kind of uh, view here, you can see the uh, Xperia is better than the Mate X3 in this regard with the zoom lens. And then the in-between zoom, uh, also 4.4, roughly 
two here I have to choose on the uh, Made X3 because it has by default a cropped in 27 millimeters. But when you take a look at here and compare it with the Xperia, again the Xperia has much more details here on the center glass than the um, Made X3. So yes, it wins also against the Made X3. So we don't have to compare further. So let's go to the start here and let's check it out uh, against something that has 4.1 rating in terms of telezoom, like for example the Magic 5 Pro or the Xiaomi 14 Pro. I think both have 4.1 rating there. Let's go with the Xiaomi first, because Xiaomi is usually tend to be quite good with portrait shots. This is now the 3.2 times, and I think it is also quite sharp and detailed. But here. You can see, again, colors are more realistic on the Xperia, the eye color especially, look at this. Uh, skin color also is a bit warmish, it's a bit softish looking. It is more like mm, going towards a DSLR kind of look on the Xiaomi, so it's not bad, but it's quite soft all over the place there. And I think here, also when it comes to realism, which one you like better? I think the Xperia is better five times. Um, which is now an optical on the Xperia and it is not optical on the Xiaomi. Which one you like better? Again, I think there's more crispiness and more sharpness and more details on the Xperia. I'm, pro <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm surprised really that the Xperia can be that good. And here I think I have to go there. 3.2 versus 3.5 times zoom. Quite interesting here. Again, the Xperia is better with the colors. It's a bit yellowish on the Xiaomi and the Xiaomi has like this less noise for sure. You can read both pretty fine. A bit easier on the Xiaomi there for sure. And let's go to the five times. And this might be also interesting. There it gets a bit grainy as well. But again, the optimization and colors are consistent with the 3.2 times zoom. Uh, it's a bit easier to read on the uh, Xiaomi for sure, but it's not bi the, that big of a difference. Uh, you can see that they're very, very close together. And do we have another shot 10 times? versus 10 times. Now it gets very interesting. And here I think at 10 times versus 10 times, again the uh, Xiaomi has this uh, different kind of, kind of color, but it's also a bit easier to read on the Xperia than on the Xiaomi. You can see here the, the, the letters there and there. A little bit more edited on the Xiaomi. So very surprised by this result. <laughs> And let's go to the flag. I hope I have this here as well. Yeah, this might be also very interesting. Chromatic aberrations on both there. And I don't see much of a difference here. The flag, the background is a bit sharper on the Xiaomi for sure than on the Xperia. But the subject that I want to photograph was the flag. So maybe tiny bit better at 10 times here for far away subject on the Xiaomi, but it's very, very close together. Now this here, very interesting again, color difference. Again, I think more reddish, which is wrong. This box has a pinkish kind of color there at the bottom. Uh, detail level, I think detail level is quite good on the uh, Xiaomi. And it's 3.2 times zoom, no issues there. And it looks a little bit like uh, the um, Xperia is sharpening up the text. You get like this little bit white uh, kind of outline around the text that you don't have on the Xiaomi. So, but pretty, pretty much the same. It's just that the colors, it's a bit more contrasty looking on the Xiaomi. Uh, the colors are a bit more real realistic on the Xperia. Next one, the in-between zooms should be again a win for the Xperia. Let's take a look. And this is very, very close. As you can see here, the little bit more of contrasty kind of look makes it look like that the Xiaomi is a little bit sharper there, but it's just a bit more contrast added. And uh, the details are almost on par. There's not much of a difference there. Uh, let's take a look at the colors as well. It's a, again a bit more punchy and contrasty color on the Xiaomi. And here you can see the detail levels that the 
Xperia has, it's a bit better than the Xiaomi. Just a tiny tad be better there than the Xiaomi. Might be also because the Xiaomi is denoising a little bit more where the Xperia doesn't do this so much. So yeah, I would say those pictures here on par. So quite interesting. Yeah, at the end we have Timmy. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's go to the next one. And this is then the uh, Magic 5 Pro. And uh, for some reason I have started almost all of them with the portrait besides the Xperia. There we go. Uh, portrait three and a half times versus three and a half times. And here you can see, yes, this is, I think, uh, true. A challenger to the Sony Xperia in terms of sharpness and detail level. However, the colors, the more natural kind of colors of the Xperia are still winning here against the Magic 5 Pro. The detail levels, the sharpness, uh, again, the eyes, when you take a look at the eyes, much more natural on the Xperia. Well, here is everything a little bit too yellowish, maybe too contrasty looking. My eye colors is, uh, are, is wrong. It's a bit too yellowish. Also, my teeth are not that yellowish. You can ask my dentist, he will agree. And we have a bit better bokeh there on the uh, Magic 5 Pro, which is quite interesting. But in general, I think very comparable, where I like the colors on the Xperia a bit better. Uh, so quite interesting here, the, the portrait. Um, uh, this is also one of the reasons I had it in my gut feeling when I took the Xperia also for Christmas for photographing uh, family members there. It's just, even if it's grainy as hell, it's just looking a bit better there. And here, five times zoom. Native on the Xperia, not native on the Magic 5 Pro. Magic 5 Pro is doing a tremendous job at this. But the Xperia is just simply better. So, portrait, anytime Xperia. So, and here I have to go to the beginning. There we go, three and a half times zoom. Again, a bit more yellowish on this one here, where the more realistic colors are on the Xperia very clean on the magic 5 pro you can read it very nicely even better than on the xperia so the detail level is definitely there i think it has something to do with the xperia only having 12 megapixels there it's not doing pixel binning where the um, magic 5 pro can do this and i think the xperia would enormously benefit from uh, pixel binning on the telezoom lens as well and here it becomes very interesting five times because here I think the uh, Magic 5 Pro loses. It's uh, not very readable as you can see there at the bottom. The text is like um, also not very optimizing the text there. It doesn't have so much noise as the Xperia. The Xperia is readable however because it's not doing trying to optimize so much and smoothening things out that the uh, Magic 5 Pro is doing. And now at 10 times Let's see how it looks like here. I think it's optimizing a little bit more there on the Magic 5 Pro, but again, the more cleaner kind of more, and it's readable, I think, on the Magic 5 Pro, even like borderline readable, but it's a bit more readable on the Magic, on the Xperia 1 Mark 5 for sure. Um, again, more edited picture definitely on the, uh, the Magic 5 Pro. The Xperia is doing a quite a little bit better there, I would say, for uh, looking more natural and now let's go to this one you can see already the flag photo is much brighter more punchier on the magic 5 pro and it's much sharper way sharper as you can see here so it seems like uh, 10 times when it comes to not so close subjects and objects and a little bit more light the magic 5 pro has way better optimized uh, lens sensor and uh, processing because this is a huge win for the Magic 5 Pro. And this range here, everything is nice and sharp. Close up things again, like this three and a half times versus three and a half times. Look at the color again. Again, it is red, so wrong color. It's not red, this box. <laughs> like I can tell you a few times, sharpness level is, I think, on par. Again, it looks a little bit more edited on the Xperia in this case, trying to optimize the text there a little bit with these white outlines around the text that we don't have on the Magic 5 Pro. So this one I would give in terms of the sharpness of the text to the Magic 5 Pro, but eye to eye, it's almost the same, exactly the same. Not much of a difference. In between zoom, quite interesting. Colors, again, color-wise, I think the Xperia is less punchy. Detail levels, quite interesting here because I think also 
that uh, there's a bit of more like punchy colors on the Magic 5 Pro, but the detail level is on par. Let's go down there. Maybe a slightly bit better on the Magic. Let's take a look at the leaves there. Compare them with here. Again, the leaves are a bit more punchy colors again, but very, very detailed, very on par. Even better on the Magic 5 Pro than on the Xiaomi 14 Pro, I would say here, this picture. Very on par, just like it has less noise on the Magic 5 Pro than on the Xperia. So, yeah, in the end, Timmy, uh, details here, very noisy on the Xperia, the Magic 5 Pro doing a bit better job. So I would say the Magic 5 Pro, uh, maybe a tiny little bit better, but almost on par the Xperia 1 Mark 5. And I think the Magic 5 Pro has 4.1 uh, points in terms of zoom here. The Xiaomi 14 Pro has 4.1 po uh, points in terms of zoom. And I think in my end conclusion, I have to give the Xperia 1 Mark 5 because it's better than the Nubia and better than the Mate X3 for sure in terms of zoom after Android 14 update and all the updates that came afterwards. That I have to also go to 4.1 times zoom. And uh, yeah, let's go to the ranking to see how this will elevate the Xperia 1 Mark 5 in my ranking system. So the conclusion and the ranking. So as you can see, I was comparing the tele zoom lens on the Xperia 1 Mark 5 with other devices that were like in the same kind of ballpark, like the lowest score for the tele zoom lens. And I was only concentrating on the tele zoom right now for the Android 14 update because this is the big, big thing. I tested the other photos, but they didn't change anything there with the ultra wide angle or the main camera so much. So nothing has changed there. So what I changed is the zoom cam photo quality from 3.5 points that we had before to 4.1 points. So it's the same kind of ballpark that we have with the uh, Magic 5 Pro and the Xiaomi 14 Pro. So because it's very, very comparable when it comes to them. Yes, one could argue the Magic 5 Pro is better at 10 times zoom for further away subjects and objects, but the Magic uh, 5 Pro is worse than the Xperia 1 Mark 5 when it comes to closer kind of subjects and objects, especially portraits. And there, this is why I have to make them equal there. And the same goes for the Xiaomi 14 Pro. So we have zoom cam photo quality 4.1. What I also raised is the camera UI because this is 1 point, 4.6 it was before. It was a little bit stuttery before, sometimes between switching and uh, especially from portrait to landscape mode, for example, the UI switching and so on. It took a while. This is not the case anymore. It's super, super snappy with everything that you do. Also, they optimized a little bit the icons here and there for bokeh mode. It's not like... You have to turn bokeh on and off. You just have to like turn it on. And when you click it away, it's uh, or you have an off button there as well. It's not so confusing as it was before. Much, much easier there. The UI has been improved much faster there as well. So this is why I'm raising the points for the camera UI to an almost perfect 4.7 points here as well. So we get 4.375 points for the Xperia 1 Mark 5. This catapults. Let's look where the Xperia was before. Xperia 1 Mark 5, as you can see here, with 4.28 points. Uh, down below the Vivo X90 Pro Plus and the Google Pixel 8 Pro, Xiaomi 14 Pro, Samsung Galaxy S20 Pro Ultra and Honor Magic 5 Pro and Mate 50 Pro. Now, with the new ranking system, this catapults the Xperia 1 Mark 5 above them. So, in between the P50 Pro and the Mate 50 Pro. Why is that the case? Because the Xperia 1 Mark 5 has a very good main camera sensor, 4.5 points. It has an okayish ultra wide angle with 4.1 points. It has an okayish zoom camera quality with 4.1 points. It has good 4.3 points for video recording. It is not as good as the Mate 60 Pro, the Vivo, uh, uh, the Oppo Finding 6 Pro. It is on par with the Vivo X100 Pro. It is definitely worse than the iPhone, but it's quite good there. And uh, autofocus, this is where it's the best. Like I never have any autofocus issues with the Xperia 1 Mark 5. And now with the tele zoom lens also updated, even there, the autofocus is working fine uh, throughout the space. It has a very good front camera with 4.3 uh, 
um, here. It is beating the Xiaomi 14 in this case, for example, and definitely the Xiaomi 13 Ultra. It has a, the, one of the best camera UIs that I saw for easy use, easy use with one hand, for example. Uh, very, very good. Done. Very nice extra features with micro SD card slot, with headphone jack, with uh, tons and tons of abilities, HDR recording, tons and tons of things. Uh, there's a video pro app for, for, for video recording, uh, where you can set up the mic sensitivity, uh, focus speaking is there as well. So it's very good when it comes to this kind of things. Is it justified to be above the Mate 50 Pro, above the Magic 5 Pro? Yeah, it depends on what you want. The Magic 5 Pro has a better main camera sensor. The Magic 5 Pro, even in zoom camera quality, I, you can see it's like 4.2 points, not 4.1 points. So it is even better than the Xperia 1 Mark 5, 10 times and beyond zoom there. Uh, Xiaomi 14 Pro is 4.1 points only there. Where the... So the Magic 5 Pro is uh, video recording quality 4.3, same as Xperia, autofocus as well. Uh, front cam as well, where it loses a little bit of the Magic 5 Pro, it's just the UI. So if you don't need those fancy UI features, the Video Pro feature, the HDR and um, settings here and there, the headphone jack, the micro SD card slot, which is an extra feature, then the Magic 5 Pro is the better device. The same goes almost for the Mate 50 Pro. Not for the Galaxy. The Galaxy is um, worse than the Xperia with the main camera sensor. The Galaxy is the processing is, processing is just wrong. You have to do too much hassle and to make the Galaxy S23 Ultra. By the way, I did a video about it uh, to look good in terms of, of, of photos there. But the Galaxy definitely wins in terms of zoom against everything else here with its 10 times optical one. Um, it's better than the Xiaomi 14 Pro, which is a bit surprising. The main camera sensor is on par, I would say. Ultra wide angle is even a little bit better on the Xiaomi 14 Pro. The zoom is on par. The video recording quality is on par. Autofocus performance, the Xperia is top notch there. Front camera is on par uh, with the Xperia 1 Mark 5. Uh, maybe the Xperia 1 Mark 5 a little bit better there. Um, especially videos. Um, camera UI, however, is where the Xperia in my regard is a little bit better, especially also for the video recording with its separate app. It's a little bit better for one-handed usage as well. The Xiaomi, you can swipe as well with one hand, but then the menu appears in the middle and you cannot change all the settings with one hand only. So this is why it's a bit weaker there. Uh, snappiness with the Xperia with the newest update is also a little bit better there. So I'm quite surprised but the Xperia 1 Mark 5 end of 2023 you can see when I'm recording this here <laughs> end of 2023 is really a little bit better than the um, uh, Xiaomi 14 Pro there as the end result. Um, but most of it is like due to the extra features that it has due to the camera UI that is very one-hand user-friendly and because in all the other terms there it might be not it might be a bit weaker in the main camera sensor a bit weaker in the, the zoom camera a bit weaker with the ultra wide angle but it's on par it's really on par with the rest there basically um, with almost everything else so in general, it's a very, very good smartphone, and I think it deserved this uh, race there. Um, and uh, yeah, which is the, the, the one that is like uh, a little bit better? It's the Huawei P50 Pro. It's worse in main camera photo quality, a bit better in the ultra wide angle, a bit better with the zoom camera, a um, bit better with video recording, a bit better uh, with the front facing camera. 4K, uh, nice uh, autofocus on the P50 Pro. Camera UI is worse and extra features are worse. So it's yeah, it's like you can choose based on this here which kind of uh, phone you want. Uh, take a look at the categories. Like I have my rating, but if you like only taking main camera photos and maybe zoom camera photos and not so much ultra wide angle, then focus on this see which one has the highest rating and then you can decide upon if you like it or not. Um, yeah, this is everything for this longer video about the re-ranking of the Xperia 1 Mark 5 after the Android 14 update and the enormous improvements in terms of tele-zoom camera. What do you think? Write it down in the comment section. What do you think about my ranking and conclusion 
of uh, the race of the Xperia 1 Mark V here that uh, yeah, climbed up quite significantly here in my ranking. So what do you think about this? Write it down in the comments. That's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.